Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And this morning, quite an exciting episode for you all. We're going to be talking to a financial analyst who also happens to have a three-week-old baby at home. Oh, my gosh. What an exciting time. Danielle, welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you. You're happy welcome. to be here. Hey, happy to have you. And, and uh, you've got a little bit of mom brain, you said, yeah. um, before you came on. Three-week-old baby, totally understandable. Um, <laughs> congratulations, by the way, to you and your husband. Thank you. You're so welcome. So what led you to Legendary? What? How did you find us? What were you looking for? So I actually wasn't really looking for anything. Um, my husband came across a girl on Instagram talking about it, um, which is kind of funny because I feel like I hear a lot of women that come on this show say that their husbands were the ones that were really skeptical about, you know, like them starting and investing in something like this. Um, but for me, it was the other way around. My husband found it and thought, you know, he said, I think you would be really good at this. Um, cause both of us are, have been for a long time. Our goal has been to be able to be home with our kids 24 mm seven. -hmm. Um, and my husband is home now. He quit his nine to five a couple of months ago. Um, so he was kind of looking for something for me to do and he found this and, you know, told me that I should try it. So I was definitely super skeptical starting off. Um, but yeah, so that's how I came across it. He found it for me. Interesting. And um, that, that, how did you pick up passion on your own? How did what happen once you were like, okay, I'll take a look or talk to us how, how he introduced it and how you received it? Yeah. So he just told me, you know, he gave me the hand, the girl's handle on Instagram and I started following okay. her. And then um, you kind of picked it up from there and just was like, hey, I, I can yeah. do that. I like mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, I'm somebody that typically like, I love school. I've always loved school. Um, yeah. I love, I just love learning new things. Um, and I typically pick up on things pretty quickly and I tend to like, I'm an all or nothing kind of person, which is sometimes good, sometimes bad. But, <laughs> um, so, you know, typically when I, you know, decide that I want to try something new, I'm usually successful at it because I don't really give up until I do see success. So, um, I just, I felt Nuggets. like- I feel like it's McDonald's. You're dropping nuggets there. Nice little, nice little tip there, though, because it's very true. It's really the only way to become successful at something is just uh, keep trying until it works and don't give up until it does. Unless it becomes so unreasonable that you've spent years trying to do something that's not working out, then it sure. might be time to move on. But that really is the key. I know that it's like, oh, wow, she has a superpower. But really, Danielle, it's what it takes to be successful at pretty much most everything. Um, would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that like when I started to see success was when like I think if you go into something with that mindset, believing that you can do it, being confident in yourself, like once I started creating content, um, with the approach that like I did have authority in the subject, like I did know what I was talking about. Once I started making content where I was acting really confident um, and acting, you know, with authority because I do have authority, you know, I went through the training. Um, I know I've seen and I don't know if it was in the training or somewhere else that I saw, but I think you said like, even if you're only one step ahead of somebody, like you're ahead of somebody. So yeah. I just kind of switched my mindset to like, I do know what I'm talking about. You know, I can be confident in the things that I'm saying. And like, once I had that shift to like, I was internally feeling confident. That's when I started to notice a difference and started to see success. Yeah. No. No. The, the, <clears throat> the feeling confident about what I'm talking about, feeling worthy of talking in general, that I think in even you as uh, knowing you're an intelligent person, knowing that you can be successful when you apply things, listening, I still think that what you just stated was really the most important part of the whole process was acting as if, that's what I call it, mm -hmm. acting as if, because there, there's this fundamentally, you can, you'll never be successful as a professional or a business owner if you're timid and afraid to market your products and services, it's yep. just not going to happen. No, no business is ever going to fall in your lap. 
So you have to act as if, not fake it till you make it, not take on things over promise under under deliver. But if you have some knowledge, as you just laid out, go ahead and say it and say it with confidence. And then if you're wrong, there's no problem in saying, I was wrong about that. I'm, I'm still learning, right? Um, what do you tell people who are having a hard time developing their confidence and getting on video and actually saying what they need to say in their videos to, to, to a point to where people are going to watch them and say, okay, I'll, I'll listen to what this person says. What, where do you think that, what do you tell people out there about how to build their confidence? Do you say, just start making videos? Do you say, watch more training? What is some of the feedback that you regularly give? Um, I mean, I think mo definitely both of the things that you said, like just start, you know, when I first, because when I first started, I didn't have a lot of people think that I've talked to think that you already have to have a following. Like you have to have all these social media platforms going. The only thing that I had was Instagram. And the only thing I did on Instagram was post like cute pictures of my kids. So, um, you know, I didn't use it for any type of like talking to a larger audience. Um, and I didn't have TikTok is where I have found the most success with this so far. So I didn't have a TikTok when I started though. Um, I thought I didn't know anything about TikTok. I thought it was silly. I thought, you know, it was like teenagers making dance videos and all of that stuff. So I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but I just started making videos. I felt really stupid when I first started making them because I'm not somebody that gets on like camera and talks to people that I don't even know. Um, but I just did it, uh, because, you know, I knew that I had to. Um, and I think also something that's really important is once I started to just be like, I didn't, I stopped thinking so much. I think it's really important to make sure that you are going through the training. You are continually expanding your knowledge, learning new things because you have to, in order to learn how to like reach people, speak to different types of people, things like that, how to um, use the social media platforms. Cause they're all different. I mean, it is important to learn yeah. all of that stuff, but when I stopped thinking so much and putting so much effort, like when I stopped putting an hour into a video and instead put five minutes into it and stopped analyzing so much, um, that's when it started to get a lot better. <laughs> um, time after time, time after time, I hear people right here on this show. Sorry, I just got a haircut. Uh, <laughs> not hair falling. Um, I, I hear time after time right here on the show, people saying, and this is my personal experience as well, by the way. Yeah. You know, I just threw that one up and it went viral. Right. Yeah. Or yeah, it's always the ones that I put the least amount of time and over analyzing into that surprise me and take off and, and do. So I think, um, this is still true. It was true back 10 years ago, this over analyzing, piece is still so true. And it's been time after time in my career because marketing is all testing. When I say marketing is testing, the first time you heard that, what did you think? And what does that mean to you now? Um, I mean, I guess, you know, it meant the same thing to me then as it does now. It's just, you know, trying different things, seeing what works, what doesn't work. I think it's definitely very important to, you know, whatever platform you're on, I, like I said, I use TikTok the most, like I look at the analytics, I look at, you know, after I post something the next day, I look at the audience that it reached. Um, I pay attention to like, what videos seem to be getting me the most, you know, opt ins to my email, um, what seems to be earning me the most commit, because sometimes, you know, people worry about views so much. But Honestly, a lot of the videos that I have that have gotten a ton of views don't necessarily convert to sales. Um, a lot of my videos where I'm just talking and being myself, and that's another thing that was really important was for me to just start being like genuine and not um, get on there trying to be somebody that I wasn't. Um, once I really started to just, you know, be genuine and talk, especially on TikTok, those videos get less views, you know, they're in the hundreds as opposed to the thousands, but those videos are converting a lot more sales for me. So I think it's important to not pay so much attention to like how many views is my video getting. So that's one part of like the testing, like don't necessarily look, okay, this video got, you know, 15,000 views, but 
how, and maybe even a lot of email opt-ins, but are you converting to sales from those email opt-ins? Or is your video that has 400 views and maybe only 10 email opt-ins, but like 40% of those opt-ins I'm converting into sales. So, you know, those are important things to be oh. looking at. So, and then just like keywords, you know, certain things that you say or certain things that you like put in the um, caption of videos. I messed around a lot with um, like my opt-in page, my thank you page. I tried different things with that to see what seemed to work. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess that's you. what I would, <clears throat> you know, take as testing. It's just like try different things and see what, what works. And I want to go back to something that you said a moment ago, which which caught my attention, which was I I started to become my authentic self. I was no longer, you know, being something that I thought I needed to be or whatever. Can you talk about what you thought you needed to be at first? Because others may be feeling that same pressure. Yeah. So I think and I've heard a lot of people struggle with this. I think when people first start out, they don't know how to get people interested because they think that they have to talk all about money and like how much money they're making, you know, I'm making, cause you know, we do have some people within this community that are making a lot of money. Um, yeah. and I think they see those people and they think that they have to be making that same amount of money in order to get people interested in what they're talking about. But honestly, the content that I put out that gets the most people interested in what I'm talking about is when I talk about you know, Emily Walcott talks a lot about like when you touch the heart, you know, when you get into that personal stuff, like I talk about being a mom, I want to be home with my kids. Um, I personally am somebody that like, it breaks my heart to think about not seeing my kids five days a week for 10 hours a day. So that's, those are the kind of people that I try and reach is, you know, parents that want to be home with their kids. So once I started talking about, you know, that kind of stuff, um, <clears throat> and just talking about, you know, like personal information, not too personal, but you know, just like personal facts about me, like posting videos of me and my husband, like taking our daughter somewhere. Um, <clears throat> I personally don't like post my kids faces or anything, but I still find ways to, you know, show like our family time together. Yeah. Um, and though that always ends up getting me a lot of results. So, I mean, really just putting out there, like who I am, why I started doing this, yeah. um, you know, I'm in the corporate world, so that's something that I tend to talk about sometimes too, is like how I just got tired of, you know, my goal when I started in the corporate life was to climb the corporate ladder, end up in an executive position, making all of this money. Um, but that's the last, you know, ever since I got married and started to have kids, like that's the last thing that I want. Um, because again, like I'm not my authentic self in that situation because I think it's all a bunch of BS to be honest with you <laughs> for the most part. Um, I mean, there are some great, you know, companies and corporations out there. I'm not saying that anyone who's in the corporate world is, you know, but, um, for me personally, like they'd I all, just, they'd all agree that there's a bunch of BS. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, and I have trouble like faking it in the sense that, you know, I'm pretending to be somebody just to get like a raise or that next job. So I just got tired of doing that stuff. Um, and so I talk a lot about, you know, that kind of stuff too. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's very relatable and it's also what the money will get you. So it's most, mm -hmm. it's not the people can't even identify with a number in the, in a bank account, even if they've never, especially if they've never had that number, but what they can relate to is an extra hour with the kids uh, coming home and not being kind of tied to your phone, chained to your phone, checking emails, not being able to unplug from the day. Um, I listened to a guy talk about uh, him putting his phone on airplane mode and and uh, uh, because he was walking through the door and and just like as he was walking through the door and I can relate to this, you know, I've done this before, kind of like just finishing up a couple of messages or whatever or got something else going and the kids are like, daddy. And you're like, hold on, hold on. Let daddy finish something. You know what I mean? Like that's what he was talking about. And I was like, and here's a guy who's a, again, this was a podcast. I was listening. It was just a clip. And it was a guy, a multimillionaire, but he never mentioned the dollar amount, never mentioned. As a matter of fact, what he was saying was, that the kids don't give two dams about how many cars we got in the garage, how big our house is, is all they want is our time. 
Yeah. You know, so that's that became my goal to give them my time. So I put my phone on airplane mode at six o'clock every night. So that hit me. And he never mentioned a single thing about a dollar amount, whether he has more or less than I do. I don't know. I just could relate. And I think every adult can, no matter how much money you make, to that feeling of not being able to leave the job at work, bringing it home. And then feeling like you're not really there for your family or there with your family. Mm -hmm. I think all, I think all people from all tax brackets can relate to that. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And I mean, especially, you know, like when you have a family and you own a home and everything, there's always stuff that needs to be done around the house. And so, you know, my husband and I were always like having to get that stuff done on the weekends. And so we literally had no time, you know, to spend doing fun things mm -hmm. with our daughter. And now, you know, we have, he doesn't have a nine to five now either. So, you know, we just all day long can do whatever we want get stuff done when we're able to get stuff done and it's especially exciting with summer coming up i know you live in florida so it's always warm for you but i'm in ohio so it's not <laughs> um, too, warm. So, too warm yeah well my so my mother-in-law she lives in sarasota so we're actually down there quite a bit and we never go in the summer because yeah it's miserable but. <laughs> it is it is but I'll, i'm gonna pretend like it's i'm gonna go woo -hoo, because we, we make the best out of it um well, I hearing your husband and all this is is having no nine to five the new nine to five. I mean, you know I what think, I mean. Yeah, I think a lot of people think that it's not possible. I mean, you know how it is. Like you get those comments on social media when you post stuff about that. Like people think it's too good to be true, and it. You know, a couple books I've read, like that Rich Dad, Poor Dad that you recommend, you know, that people read. And then that um, I think it's the four hour work week, it's called, um, yeah, by Tim you know, Ferris. what's that? By Tim Ferriss, the four hour work week. Yes. That was a book that got me originally excited back, you know, 12 years ago. Uh, I was never able to actually work a four hour work week, even as an Internet <laughs> marketer. But it was it's a nice it's a nice idea. You know, even if you put in an hour a day, that's still seven hours a week. Yeah. Well, and I mean, if even if you're putting in like four hours a day, if you're at home doing it, you know, and you can do it when you do have like I work when my daughters nap, um, you know, in the evening yeah. after they go to bed, you know, in the morning, whatever it or, you know, when they're playing outside, you know, I do it when I'm not taking away from the attention that I want to be giving them. So yeah. I think just starting to like read stuff like that and change my mindset because you know, we're just so ingrained to think that, you know, we have to like outside out of high school, you need to go to college for four years or more because nowadays you have to get a master's degree to get, you know, any kind of decent salary. Um, you know, and then after you're done with that, you're going to work and, you know, a lot of people drive far to their job. So maybe they're driving an hour to get to work. They're there for eight or nine hours. They're driving an hour to get home. But that's just like people think that's just normal. Like that's just what you do. That's what you have to do in order to support your family. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just having that mindset shift that like, oh, actually, you don't have to do that, you know, and there are other opportunities out there in this day and age, like to make money online. Um, but I mean, that's why that was me at first. You know, I said I was a skeptical one and my husband was like, you should try this. So, that's I mean, really I was definitely good. very skeptical at first, but. And yeah. you should be, quite frankly, you yeah. should be skeptical, folks. You should be. There is a lot of crap out there. You should be very skeptical of B, us, and anybody else. That yeah. is a fact, Jack, because there's a lot of weirdos out there, man. There's a lot of bad people. There's a lot of people who don't have your best interest in mind. So it is actually a really positive thing to be skeptical, to really take your time, to make sure that something is what you, th what you think it is. Um, be very careful out here on the internet. And quite frankly, I'm not here saying that this is for everybody. People come into this community come sometimes. I see them in comments as if we're saying that this is for absolutely every single person. That's not what we're saying. Mm -hmm. We're not saying that this is for absolutely every person. The same way that your college enrollment officer should have told you that college isn't for everyone. It really isn't. And I've heard that from enough college graduates now, uh, even though I'm not one, to know that, hey, look, college can be 
a burden for a lot of people who are not really clear what they want to do and then may not even land in their degree field, but still have 50 to $100,000 in debt. So this is not for everybody. But the beautiful thing is, is that um, you can develop the skills and discipline that you need to do this if it is something that you want to do. If right. it is something that you want to do. Time management is also an important thing. Learning how to manage your time. You mentioned 10 hours a day with your kids at minimum. That's a lot. How do you make, how do you turn it off at night to make sure that you get the, you know, and not let it push into my biggest problem years ago was overworking and then working into family and not being able to have boundaries around my time and just post the video. I wanted to refilm it or I wanted to rewrite something or, or, or I just had a hard time managing my time. How do you manage your time now with with one, maybe two kids, a husband and yeah. this business, but also managing your own energy? How are you managing your time and what does a day look like? Like where you mentioned naps. So can you give us a little bit more? What does a schedule look like just in, in loose terms, but help us understand where you're fitting everything in? Yeah. So it actually helps me a lot to have this second baby because um when I first start, so I started in, I think I purchased the training end of November or December, you know, of 2022. So just a few months ago. Um, and when I first started, like I said earlier, I'm an all or nothing kind of person. So like when I first started and watched the first couple, I think it took me to like video three or day three to be like, I'm doing this. Like, I think day three was when I decided like, absolutely, I'm gonna, you know, give this everything. I really want to do this. Um, and so once I made that decision, I then started to give it a ton of my time. Um, and, you know, I'm fortunate enough that my husband is home. So he was able to, you know, pick up things that I would normally do. And this was before our baby was born. So we just had our toddler and, you know, so he was taking care of her, making her most of her meals, putting her to bed at night and stuff. Because, you know, in that first few weeks that I went through the training, I was like putting a lot into it. Um, and I did get a little bit overwhelmed because I was putting so much time to it into it every day because I just wanted to like get started. Um, and so then like once I did get started, I launched my social media page. Like that first month is really important. I think you do kind of have to like post a lot. You want to build your follow. I mean, you can move slower if you want to, but I didn't want to move slow. So, and I wanted to get everything like started and set up before our second baby got here. <laughs> um, so, you know, I was putting a lot into it, but, and stressing out a lot about it. And like I said, like spending an hour to make a video, like analyzing it afterwards, checking my TikTok, like every 10 minutes, like how many, did I get more views? Like, did I get any comments? Like looking at my email, did anybody opt into my email? Like I was constantly checking things. And then once I got closer to my due date with my second daughter, I started to scale back a little bit. You know, I decided like, I need to take a little bit of time. I can get back into this you know, hardcore once she's born and I'm done like healing and, you know, we get through those first few weeks. Yeah. And when I took that step back, you know, because I did work really hard in the first couple of months and got everything, you know, automated, you know, all of that stuff already set up so that I didn't have to be, you know, working on little things. Um, a lot of days, like I only posted one video and I just posted like a video. I reposted something that I had already made like a month ago. Um, or I talked about like, I made a new video, but I kind of like talked about the same thing. Um, I started doing that and I was still getting the same amount of sales, actually more sales, like my sales increased. Um, I think just because like I finally had gotten established and I started to gain some traction. Um, but so that period of time, those few weeks that I took a little bit of a break, you know, before my daughter's birth and then afterwards, I realized like, I don't have to be putting in this, you know, six to eight hours a day into this business in order to be successful. So now that I've, you know, started it again, got back into it again, now that my daughter's born, yeah. um, you know, I'm only spending like two hours max a day on this. I intend to in the future spend a little more time. There's more things I want to do. You know, I want to branch off into another niche. I would like to eventually create my own digital products, things like that. 
Um, but I can slowly, you know, kind of work towards that. So, I mean, typically in a day, I'm honestly not really doing, I'm thinking, I'm always like thinking. So, yeah. um, you know, I'll get ideas that pop into my head and I just make a note in my phone so that I can, you know, address it later when I have the time. But yeah. I'm primarily working for like two hours in the afternoon, my two and a half year old naps, you know, from like 12 to two. And then yeah my newborn is still sleeping all the time. So, yeah. um, I usually just take those two hours and then mm. after the girls go to bed at night, I usually will like browse other, some other content or like do something to kind of like expand my education. If you will, sure. I'll do that for a little but bit in, in a relaxing way, kind of yeah. like not where you're particularly filming, but more where you're like, kind of like kind of relaxingly researching and looking what other people are doing kind of maybe on the couch or whatever just laying yep. around type of thing yeah yep yeah yeah, yeah so totally. that's kind of what a typical day looks like i mean and then the rest of my time i'm just you know being a mom so yeah yeah and that that makes so much sense and it's very clear it's very well laid out I'm sure very helpful to everybody listening i can remember when my son was born my my last son the last one um <clears throat> he, yeah, he was sleeping a lot. I was out in the garage. Now we usually have, we, my wife and I work at an office house, but we were both at home and I was in the garage working and kind of like coming in, but I got a lot of work done during that time when he was sleeping a lot. And that was December of 2020, 2020 or 2021, something like that. Uh, he's going to be three this year. So, um, yeah, like we really can you can you you can get a lot done if you if you put your mind to it and you manage your time. Um, but I, what I my favorite thing about what you said was realizing that it doesn't take as long as you thought it did. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, I think I was like wasting energy on things that I now realize I don't, you know, have to do. So yeah. I think that's another part of like, like testing when you start doing wow. something like this is, um, you know, and that it's one thing that I was reading in that four hour work week book. Um, it talks about like kind of trimming the fat and like, what are you putting a lot of time into that you don't necessarily have to be putting time into. So I just kind of started to look at like what things that I'm doing, what activities, what areas that I'm putting my energy into are actually like producing this income I'm making and what things are just kind of like, I think I have to do them, but I don't really have to do them. Um, so I was kind of able to figure that out during that time, you know, that I like took a little bit of a break to have my baby. Um, yeah. you know, I was able to realize it was a blessing. You know, I was able to realize like what things weren't even like producing an income for me anyway. So we'll hear this out, everybody, what Danny just said. And also, um, do you go by both Danny and Danielle? I'm sure you do. Right. Yeah. Danny, yeah. I, like, I like Danny. I like Danny for a girl's name. Uh, mm -hmm. always have. Um, so, uh, so I like this rule, my friends, this kind of concept that she's talking about, which I'm going to give you something tangible to actually lock into right now. It's the 80, 20 rule, mm -hmm. it's the 80, 20 rule, 80% 80 of what you do, excuse me, let's look at it from the other perspective. 20% of what you do will create 80% of your results, which means that 80% of what you're doing every day is probably wasted time. Let me stay here for a minute because this is a big deal. This is what Danny's talking about. 80% of your results come from 20% of the activities that you're doing every day in your business. It's your job to identify what are those 20% of activities and begin to eliminate those that 80%, 80-20. It's a, not a new concept. But time after time and in persons after person's life and business, it's true. Have you heard of that before? And is that mm -hmm. what you're talking about here? I mean, are, could we essentially boil it down to the 80-20 rule? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, just like in my corporate job, um, which I do still have my corporate job. I do you? Um, Stop it. I mean, <laughs> where are you getting the time? Well, I'm on maternity leave right now. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm like, and... What? You know, I actually also something that I wanted to mention um, real quick is that so my corporate job is now 100 percent remote. I work from home um, and that wasn't something that initially was the case. I kind of like told them either you let me work from home or I'm not working anymore, um, thinking that they would tell me like you're not working anymore. <laughs> um, 
but they were like, all right, go ahead. So I, that's like another example of something that people just don't realize. Like you just got, I mean, I was, I was willing to lose that job though. So I guess you yeah. kind of have to be in a situation where it is okay. If like they say, yeah, you're not, <laughs> we don't oh, if, you, if you make a threat and they call your bluff, you better be ready for them to call yeah. your bluff. <laughs> but you could even just approach it like, Hey, is this something that we could maybe, you know, I think people just don't like ask for things or they don't try. Um, you know, even like I got a raise that I wasn't supposed to get because I asked for it. I was like, mm, maybe I'll just ask and see what happens. You know, I'll produce a case like I got all of these tasks added on that weren't initially a part of my job description. Do you think you could compensate me a little bit for it? Um, you know, and then I asked for the 100 percent remote work situation and they told me that I could. And yeah. so, yeah, I mean, I think um, so. Anyway, yeah, my point was just I do still have my corporate job. I'm on maternity leave until sometime in June. Um, but that's a hundred percent from home. So, um, yeah. and it doesn't actually require, you know, I was going into the office 40 hours, but my job doesn't require me to work 40 hours. So, right. um, that's kind of like that 80, 20 thing is like, even your I, job is 20% of the stuff is the most important stuff that matters. Right. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And that's true with everything. I mean, if you really like want to cut out, like this could be the theme of an entire episode. It could be the theme of entire anything. It's just such a big concept, such a huge principle is that it's true in, in pr like it's true in pretty much everything. 20% of the things that you do with and for your spouse make up 80% of the impact. 20% of the things that you do for and with your kids make 80% of the impact. Whereas all these other things that a lot of times we we take on because we can't say no, end up just filling our lives. We say yes to them. They don't really make impact. And then we get resentful about saying yes about them. So as an entrepreneur, it's really important to learn how to set boundaries. I was listening to Rob Drydeck, and he's uh, the guy from Ridiculousness. And he's uh, he's an entrepreneur. He had some clothing companies. But he said... You know, I, I, the, the more successful I become, the more valuable I realize that my time is. And when you realize how valuable your time is, it's a lot easier to say no. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to say no to things and people and opportunities, right? Which are really distractions disguised as opportunities. How do you avoid shiny object syndrome? Um, I mean, I, don't have like a whole lot of extra time considering the amount of time that I do want to spend with my kids, with my husband. And then, you know, once I'm not on leave anymore and I have this other job that I actually am hoping to quit pretty soon, but, <laughs> um, you know, I just, I don't have a whole lot of time and I, and I have learned that fact that like my time is valuable. So, um, so valuable. And as a, as a mother and as a, wow, I mean, it's almost, I don't mean to cut you up, but it's almost right. like when we realize that around the age and who cares what age you are, when you realize this, it's just a miracle that you realize it, that your life, your time is so freaking valuable, both for your financial future and what activities, but also for your kids and your family. But you had that epiphany it continued. Sorry for interrupting. Oh, no, you're okay. I mean, that's it really, you know, and, um, you know, just realizing that sometimes it's going to take a little bit of time to start to see results. Um, so, you know, I'm also somebody that like tends to be impatient and, you know, wants to see like that instant gratification right away. And I think that people that are like that are the people that tend to be, you know, the most successful. Um, but it's like disciplining yourself in the early stages when you aren't seeing any results and you feel like what you're doing isn't working. Um, I, I literally had a conversation with my husband Um you know, the night before my social media page really took off. Um, and I started to like, you know, get the night people. before Christmas. Yeah. I literally was telling him, like, I don't... <laughs> not a person was opting in, not even a mouse. <laughs> yeah. I mean, truly like, and I was telling him like, I don't, I think I, and I was only like a month in, like, you know, I expected to like right away oh start, you know, cause some people do, right. but yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. But you know, not a larger amount of people don't see 
extravagant results right away. And, um, so yeah, I mean, I had a conversation with him, like, I don't know if I want to keep doing this, like it's not working. And then literally the next day, you know, it started to, and I mean, you still have like, I'm still early in this. So I'm not like every day seeing like big numbers that are making me excited. You know, um, it's something that I'm going to have to continually work at, you know, to get to the place that I want to be at with this. Um, but just having not like having that, um, I really want to see results, use that to like motivate you, but don't let it be something that makes you like quit everything that you start because you're not seeing something right away. I think those are the people that say like, I spent all of this money on all of these different courses that didn't work. Um, but I think those people just don't give it time, you know, give it time to work. So that's, that's what was coming up for me as you were talking was that, you know, uh, you can want to see results super fast. That's a good thing. That Mm -hmm. means you're excited and motivated. But if it is fuel for you to every couple of weeks, start a new course or start a new business because you think that, well, this hasn't taken off in the first couple of weeks or month or whatever. So let me go and try something new. Just every time you do that, the best image for you to, to, to remember is that meme of the guy digging for the diamonds and he quits right before he gets there. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's like so often we quit, as I like to say, right before the miracle happens. And that miracle could be something small. It could be something big. But there's it's not a burning bush moment. That's the miracle is not a burning bush. It's not a million dollar commission. It's an opt-in. It's a viral video. It's a commission that keeps you going to the next day. That's life, folks. I mean, my dad right now is fighting for his life at at a hospital. He had open heart surgery. And uh, every day, it's just a new day. There's no guarantees. He's trying. That's the same even if we're up living, healthy, breathing. There's no guarantees. You know, every single day we have to... um, put in, you know, what we can put in for that day and realize that starting something new is not the answer. That's only going to put me back at the, at the starting line again. I'm going to be brand new with something, starting something over again. Here's the, here's, I want, I want all the entrepreneurs in the house and those, the entrepreneurs, the entrepreneurs who are yet, the, the employees who are yet to be entrepreneurs. I want you to hear this, that, that, Entrepreneurship is not a helicopter ride to the top of the mountain. It is a daily adventure. And that's what you're enrolling into. You're enrolling into that lifestyle. You're not enrolling into the lifestyles of the rich and famous. That was a TV show you watched as a child. You're enrolling into a lifestyle of adventure, a lifestyle of personal responsibility a lifestyle of freedom, insane freedom. But with that freedom comes responsibility. You know what the responsibility is? It's that discipline. You know, it's that staying. It's that if you're going to be the CEO of the company, I want you to think about your company five years into the into the future and think about if you were in my shoes and you had a couple of bad days or a bad month, do you shut the whole company down? Do I shut the whole company down? That's how I have to think, even if I've only got five followers, right? It's like I have to know that these five followers are going to turn into 5,000, are going to turn into 10,000, are going to turn into 50,000. And I'm going to have the same exact challenges at that point that I have today. I'm going to still run into problems and I'm going to have to ask myself, do I want to keep going or do I want to quit? Do I want to abandon ship? Because that over there looks hotter. Do you know how many opportunities I've had come across my desk, Danny, in the past 10 years that I wanted to do so bad, you know, but it's like, I know this will kill me. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I know it's going to kill everything I have if I pursue this, you know, mm-hmm. and it's like being super honest with myself. What's something that you've had to be super honest with yourself about? And then we'll get you out of here because I know you got to go relieve the husband. Thank God. Let's give him a huge standing <laughs> ovation for the work that he's putting in. What an incredible guy. 
But what have you had to be super honest with yourself about uh, that you didn't expect to have to be over the past couple of months? Um, or what oh did you have to come to terms with about entrepreneurship is, is more specifically what I'm looking for here. What did you, what did you, what have you come to terms with that you didn't particularly know that you were going to have to, or was going to be a part of this journey? Um, I think, so I'm somebody, and I don't really know where this comes from. I mean, probably something like growing up, everything comes from our childhood, right? It seems, but um, <laughs> it does. I know. I am somebody who's so hard on myself about absolutely mm -hmm. everything. Um, and I second guess myself mm -hmm. about everything. Like my husband is on me all the time about like, I can't, sometimes I just like can't make a decision because like I question, I don't just go with my gut. I don't go with even mm -hmm. things with being a mom. Like I don't trust myself as a mother sometimes. Um, then I'm making the right decision for my kids and relatable. Um, yeah. I mean, my husband and my husband is like the opposite. He like isn't hard on himself at all and like just makes decisions without really thinking that about them that much and yeah it is i mean it's, it's good it's like a good balance that we have for one another because you know it makes me sometimes i can be like okay maybe we shouldn't buy that let's not like instantly jump on that decision but um so we kind of balance each other out but anyways um so yeah i mean it's when you do become decide to become an entrepreneur create your own business you're going to have failures you're going to have things that you do and you try that don't work and not allowing that to like make me internalize the failure and you know make me feel like I'm the one that's a failure and like this is just something that I can't do like clearly I'm just not you know made to be successful at this like I, I can't do it you know instead of like beating myself up and letting failures or letting like slow weeks that I have or you know whatever it is um be something that makes me quit or makes me lose that confidence. So then like in my content or, you know, when I'm talking to people, I no longer exude that like confidence and that authority. You know, I lose that when I allow that stuff, you know, those failures or those minor setbacks to affect me internally. Yeah. Um, so I've definitely had to like, I've always known that I'm like that, but this has like started to bring it out a lot more. Like I've had some days where, you know, what I'm doing now with this has made me like cry because, you know, I, I do feel, you know, I have had days where I feel like, you know, I I'm, I'm failing or like, I don't know what I'm doing or, um, you know, I don't know if I can make this work long term. And luckily, like, you know, my husband is really good at like talking me, he knows me well enough by now that he knows what to say to me in those situations. But, um, so yeah, I mean, just like facing that, you know, in this, online business world and this entrepreneurship world, like not internalizing, you know, those setbacks and failures. I love that. I love that. Would you mind sharing what does help you for somebody to say to you when you're feeling like that? Because sometimes it's helpful for us as the entrepreneur, the person who's trying something new in the relationship, whatever, to really tell our partners, hey, I'm feeling like this. I know this is new. It'd be really, these are some of the things that would really be helpful for me to hear right now from you. And I love you. And what you're saying is not wrong. But w w Danny, what are some of the things that you like to hear when you're feeling like that? Um, I mean, sometimes I, I just need to like uh, look at it and talk it out like logically. Um, so I, because all of that stuff is like very, it's emotional and, you know, emotional emotions are you know, wonderful. And they're, um, we're meant to experience them. And, you know, there's a, you know, the range of emotions that we experience that as humans, like have a purpose, no. but at the same time, you know, focusing too much on emotions and being like over emotional in a lot of situations can just be really destructive. So a lot of times he just kind of like brings me back to earth and like helps me look at things a little more practically, like, you know, what's the worst thing that can happen if it doesn't work out? Like, is it the end of the world if it doesn't work out? No, mm -hmm. it's not because like we are okay, you know, financially, like, or we'll find something else that can earn us an income. Um, and then like, he'll also point out, you know, decisions that I have made in the past and like, 
you know, our two and a half year old daughter is an amazing little human. And, you know, he'll point out like, look at like, you know, how smart she is or how like polite she is and how, you know, yeah. oh, your you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Like, you oh know, God. Yeah. Like the work that we have put in and primarily me, cause he only just has quit his job a few months ago and he wasn't home a whole lot when he was working. Um, so he just points out things like that. Like, look at what you've done in the past and like, look at how successful you have been at this in the past. Um, so I think just kind of like bringing it back down to earth, like not letting your emotions like take you away and instead like kind of just like sometimes I just need a little bit of a reality check and to realize that like I don't need to take myself so seriously. I don't need to take this venture so seriously. Like yeah. it's okay to relax a little bit. So that's the kind of stuff, you know, that he usually says to me. That's cool. That's helpful to hear. And hopefully somebody may have picked up a few things for to be instructive to our spouses. You know, we we have to know that for us, this is new. We have to remember, it's helpful for us to remember that this is new for us. It's also new for our families. <laughs> I mean, yeah. when I started this dadgum thing, I was went from construction to setting up a desk in my middle of my living room 12 years ago. My family was like, the hell's dad doing? You know, I'm like, Shh. they're like, <laughs> chill, you know? So I, I had to learn how to, um, how to, how to, how to, how to, how to manage myself and how <laughs> to realize that this was a big boy decision I was making to do. I'm ma I'm making the decision to do this. Even if my husband or wife introduced me to it, I'm still making the decision to do this. And so I need to, I need to, I need to grow myself up. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm talking about me. I had to grow myself up to say, okay, if I'm going to be the boss, the CEO, if I'm going to own a business, let me figure out how to do that. Let me figure out what that looks like. Let me figure out how to act like a boss. Yep. <laughs> let me let me figure out how to how to talk to people. The boss doesn't talk to people mean. He can. That might be what you saw in some movie sometimes, but I can promise you, it's not very effective. Mm -hmm. So we have to learn how to 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 to. to um, sell those to solicit to those around us, the support that we need that, that, that was really helpful because we can oftentimes feel frustrated by what our spouse says or does, but if we're not giving them anything better to do, then they're just doing the best that they can. And I was wrong in thinking that my wife wasn't supportive 12 years ago when in reality she was. But it was me who who was the emotional roller coaster and needed to learn how to just take responsibility for my my uh, business, for my business, both my business and my business. Right. As an individual, but also then go to my spouse and say, hey, it make me feel really feel really loved and supported if you did this. Or if, if, um, when I was, you know, when I, when I, when I asked you for, when I was venting and, and getting really emotional that, um, you, you just listened or mm -hmm. that you reminded me of all the logic, you know, you helped me to become more logical and reminded me of everything that I've accomplished so far, reminded me of, that we're going to be okay. It's okay to instruct our support system, how to support us. It's also okay to go out there and specifically pick actual support people to support us in our journey. Some examples of that would be friends in the industry, in this community, people that we've met, might be a therapist, might be a personal one-on-one -on -one coach that you really trust and feel comfortable with. And of course, you're lucky if it's your spouse. You're lucky if it's your spouse and you can get that sort of synergy going at the beginning. For many of us, it takes many years to get that synergy going with a spouse. If you're feeling frustrated that your spouse is not supporting you right now, hang in there and keep. Here's what uh, my, my last tip of the day will be is ask your spouse how you can make them feel loved and supported instead of sounding instead of just trying to get everybody to love and support you right mm -hmm. it's like i'm the one who made the decision to do the business i'm the one who made the decision to actually take this on right so let me instruct everybody around me the things that will make me feel loved and supported but let me also not forget to ask them hey i'm doing something new hey i know this is different dad's doing something different mom's doing something different how can I make you feel loved and supported? And I'm telling you, you'll 
feel the dynamic in your home. This is mostly for us men, right? We have a hard time understanding this. We just think everybody's supposed to support us all the time. Well, they're not because we're doing crazy shit out here, starting businesses and stuff on the internet. So we have to remind them and let them know, hey, I realize I'm doing something right now that's out of the ordinary. And I want you to know that I'm still here with you and that I love you. I want you to know that I, I'll do anything I can within reason to make you feel loved and supported. And oh, by the way, this makes me feel loved and supported. When daddy's in his office and I've got the door closed, don't come in. I'll be out and you could even give them an expectation. Daddy will be out every hour or whatever. There's, it's easier to do give and take when we as the entrepreneur who are starting a new thing don't act like the whole world should stop now because we've started a new business. I love your humility, Danny. I love your, your work ethic. I love the way that you're doing so much um, while still maintaining your sanity. God bless you. And congratulations mm -hmm. with a new member of your family. It sounds like you guys got a wonderful thing going. And Thank you. Come, come back and see me in the near future. We'll keep talking about your journey, okay? Yeah, absolutely. All right. We'll say hi to your husband as well. And uh, we'll talk to you very soon, Danny. Be legendary. All right. Sounds good. See you later. Yeah, bye-bye. All right, my friends. What a great conversation this morning to start off the day, 10.52 a.m. Eastern time, baby. I'm ready to rock and roll, okay? Rock and roll um, because guess what? Not only is it Thursday, it's also the first month of the second quarter of the year. And as entrepreneurs, you can track your year you know, differently than a normal person who's just looking from Monday to Friday. First quarter, the first quarter just ended, second quarter starting now, right? A month is about to end and we'll start a new month. There's ways that you can track your progress from quarter to quarter, from month to month. Be aware of where we're at inside of the year so you can set your, remember, you still have time to make 2023 the best year of your life. There's still so much time to do that. So take the nuggets that Danny dropped today, implement them into your life and know that they're going to feel a little bit different and look a little bit different for me, for each one of you, but personalize this business into your life and see how it flourishes, see how it blossoms. Just keep watering it, keep putting sun on it, meaning keep learning, but keep taking action and don't quit. We'll see you back here tomorrow for another episode.